Hello, welcome or welcome back to Heretic Owl Tarot. I know it's been a minute. <laughs> oh my, how are you doing? I hope you're doing well. I just, I feel like, I feel like I've been saying this for so long in my own personal life, but I feel like I keep like getting ripped to shreds <laughs> and then I put myself back together and I'm like, cool, this feels good. This makes sense. You know, these pieces fit. And then not long after that, I feel like I'm like ripped to shreds again. Um, more so obviously like energetically, you know, and I, I think in big part that is because number one, maybe not even in any type of particular order, but like a culmination of, of all of these things, Jupiter is in my 12th house. And the last time Jupiter was in my 12th house is actually when I started my actual real <laughs> and really a better word for that is intentional healing. I, I met a mentor at the time that really helped me unpack a lot of my, my, un, my subconscious shit. Literally, I, I think I cried for the first at least three weeks when we first started working together um, before I was able to kind of start making practical, <laughs> you know, uh, steps forward. So that was back in 2012. And literally, because I asked this person the dates of all of these things, and granted, they're not like exact, but they're, they're pretty close. Um, because this person has a defined head and Ajna, like on the human design side of things and, and is just, uh, they remember everything. I'm pretty sure they've said they remember their own birth. Like <laughs> I have an undefined head and Ajna. So it's just like, you know, shit is just like swirling around in there. I remember the most random stuff, but not my own birth. So anyway, um, if you've made it this far, I mean, I will. A part of me is like, I might make this its own separate video, but the other part of me is like, it's probably going to end up being the intro and I'll just put a, a time stamp in the description for when the actual reading starts. If you don't want to sit here and listen to me ramble because my defined throat, like I just, I have to ramble for a second. So bear with me. So anyway, <laughs> back to my, my, my little ramble. How do you like my, my new setup? We'll see if this, like, if this spot becomes permanent, it's at least temporary. We'll see. We'll see how it goes, but I love it. I love the, the little um, plant vibe going on. So anyway, Gemini, Jupiter, <laughs> that's my 12th house. And there, there is, it's like, you know, this, first of all, it's like a, a deeper understanding even of myself over the last 12 years, right? Like um, just the work that I've put in to myself, to understanding how I even became the person that I have become. And do I, you know, what, what do, are there things that maybe I want to change that are just no longer fitting into my life or I'm finally realizing aren't fitting into my life, which is the next thing. So <laughs> Pluto, O M F G. Um, Pluto has been squaring my natal Saturn 
since it went back into Capricorn, I have a 29 degree Saturn. And, you know, Pluto has been at 29 degrees for the last, I don't know, however long. And um, not to mention even before, right? Because it went into Aquarius for a sec and then it retrograded back out. So Pluto has been squaring my natal Saturn for, I, I, I honestly have no effing clue how long. Not to mention, I have a 27 degree Pluto that's conjunct my Saturn at 29 degrees. So at some point in the last couple years, Pluto was squaring my natal Pluto. So, <laughs> um, so yeah, that, that is also a bit uncomfy and has been a bit uncomfy. And I do feel like I'm finally starting to realize that, again, you know, just the, the things that I was doing, how I was operating in my life, how I was operating in my relationships, how I was even approaching work and my idea of work and my whatever. I, I feel like I, I'm starting to finally get the clue on all of that. Um, and quite frankly, I am just, I am excited for Pluto to just be away from, <laughs> from my, my Saturn, from my Pluto. I don't know, you know, I'm not so educated in, in astrology to know, you know, when that relief will start to come. Like how far does Pluto have to be in Aquarius in order for me to feel a little bit of relief from that. <laughs> Not to mention too, Neptune was squaring my natal Neptune for the last, again, I don't know how long I have a 28 degree Neptune. Um, so there was that going on. Saturn has been tap dancing on my, my, um, MC degree like I think it made it to the exact degree that my MC is and then it went retrograde so it got there and then it was like oh nope I just heard that Aaliyah song um back back forth and forth because that's how you know it seems like there's just you know <laughs> obviously right a lot of that going on with retrogrades and and all of this stuff so Saturn made it to my MC, which is in my ninth house. And then it went backwards. And then at some point it's going to go forward again and go over that bitch one more time before it leaves the sign entirely. I can't even imagine what it's going to be like in my 10th house, but I don't have any placements there, so it might be okay. But, um, and it's loosely opposing my moon right now. So... <laughs> Oh, and Uranus is almost right on top of my Chiron. I have a 27 degree Taurus Chiron and a 28 degree Taurus Sun. So, um, you know, that's coming up at some point. All of that is to say that, you know, I have not been consistent here in this space. And that, that has caused me a lot of anxiety because I really do enjoy showing up here. I really enjoy the expansion that, that the space that, um, you know, tarot readings that, you know, connecting with you guys offers. And I cannot <laughs> guarantee that it would be more consistent going forward, but I, I want to, it is on my, my list of things to prioritize um the first thing being myself because um i really have not done that um i you know i i tend to sacrifice my own well-being and that has been something that has you know just it, it's been at the forefront so if you are still here i i am so glad 
And I want you to know that I do think of you often. What is so funny is that, look at, okay, I didn't even, <laughs> I didn't even put that together. This looks like a little succulent here in the middle. And then just these flowers around the border. That's so funny. I actually, just to kind of wrap this up, because now I don't even know what I was talking about before I, I realized that, but I was actually looking, oh, I was grabbing my microphone actually. And then I look over to where like I, I have all of my tarot decks crammed into this one shelf. And I was like, oh, I haven't used the Muse tarot in a while, a long time actually. So I was like, do you want to do the reading? Because I always, always ask my decks before I even do the reading if they want to do the reading. I actually asked this deck if it wanted to be a clarifying deck. This is the Tarot of the Abyss. And this is the card that came out, the Five of Cups. So that is a, that's a no. That is a no from Tarot of the Abyss. I think I already shuffled, well, the Star card came out. The Three of Pentacles, working together, the Fool. I love that. So yes, this deck was definitely a yes, but I love the coordination. That is so funny to me. So it's been 15 minutes already. If you listen to this whole thing, thank you so much for allowing me the space to share. And if you know your own astrology, if you've, you know, um, if there's some crazy shit going on with you too, I would love to hear it if you feel like sharing because I think it really does just help, um, you know, to share those things and even to just allowing other people to, to see you and honor you in your experience. So with that being said, let's get into the readings. Great. So this is a reading for Virgo, wherever Virgo is in your chart. I hope you're doing well. I'm just going to shuffle the cards a bunch of times and we'll get your cards out. I am doing the spread a little bit different this time around. Um, I'm doing a three card spread, the current energy, what's leaving and what's coming in. And then we're going to clarify each one of those positions with an additional card. Ha, that was the hermit <laughs> that came out. I love that showing up for your own reading already. Beautiful. Also, I'm not taking jumpers anymore. We switched the whole thing up over here. All right, give me just a sec to get these cards shuffled and then we'll get your, your spread. Okay, for Virgo. Current energy, seven of swords. What's leaving? Ten of materials and what's coming in eight of materials or eight of pentacles and ten of pentacles then to clarify the seven of swords we have the page of cups with the oh <laughs> with the ten of pentacles we have the eight of voices and with the eight of pentacles we have the knight of pentacles interesting so i was i was sitting here just kind of staring, you know, at these cards. And with these two here in the beginning, the current energy. So swords have to do with our mind, our mindset, beliefs, you know, um, truth and honesty too. I throw ego in with the swords because that's generally where we hear our ego is in our minds. And cups have to do with our emotions our intuition, love, heart chakra. How are we feeling about things versus how are we thinking about them or how are we perceiving them in our heads, right? So it was literally like getting out of our head because this, you know, the, the vocal point, fo focal point, whatever, in the seven of swords is like this figure here. My eye keeps going to them and like how their hair is like 
kind of creating this portal here or just how it's like draping around it. It's just interesting because it's like there's this focus on the hair. And I mean, it could be too. I don't know. I keep hearing like hair as identity, which I, I totally get being a person who um, I've changed my hair a few times in my life. And I mean, the the change, the impact that it has to your feeling about yourself, to your confidence. So I don't know. That's interesting. But in the page of emotions, the top of their head is even cut off. So it's like literally getting out of your head and getting into your body. Especially to, so the Seven of, of Swords talks about manipulation, trickery, also self-sabotage because I see the Seven of Swords as being the card of us fooling ourselves. Like, where are we immediately handicapping ourselves mentally because we have a story attached to um, our ability, to our capacity, to our um, whatever we deserve, right? Like, and so it holds us back or it does make us start trying to manipulate a situation so that it works out in our favor. And again, it's like stored energy because like I was saying, I do believe that we store energy in our hair. I don't know if that's like a woman thing. I don't know. But if you've had a, if you've made a drastic change to your hair, like chopped off a lot of hair, made a color change, like, I don't know if you, have you heard of like when people have like going to their red hair era, um, like they're going through something. It's like a transitionary like type of, of energy. Even speaking of red, like there's all these, this red on the table too, which is root chakra and a lot of pentacles, earth, right? Anyway, so... With the seven, I know we're still even talking about these first two cards, but the seven of swords being in the current energy, it's like, is there something in your life that either you're just not seeing clearly or you're viewing it from a position of like a, a, a story, a belief? And is that story or that belief sabotaging you in some way? Is it making you... Um, again, you know, act in a way where you feel like you have to like manipulate a situation and it's like manipulation. It's, it could go, it's like good or bad. I'm not necessarily talking about like the negative type of manipulation, but like when you start feeling like you have to strategize to get your way, I think that's when things start getting a little shaky because that also too means that we are taking our trust away from our life unfolding in the best way that it possibly can because we're we're worried or we're afraid that it's not going to go the way that we believe it should and so it's like you know we start getting our mind involved and we start strategizing however though right it's it's clarified by the page of cups the page of cups is very imaginative very open i mean there's this heart here that you know there's all this energy coming out of not to mention actually look at both of these cards there's this portal here there's a portal here as well so it's kind of like the thing about you will never miss an opportunity that is meant for you it could just be delayed it could just show up in a different form but again like we would have to get out of that strategizing energy because if you are in, in, in that mode and this opportunity presented itself, but it presented itself this way instead of that way, you wouldn't see it because you would be like, I'm expecting it to look like this, not to look like this. I'm expecting it to logically or mentally, you know, come to me versus intuitively. And instead of going by what makes you feel good or even it's okay. <laughs> let's, 
Last thing I'm going to say about this, because I almost kind of feel like I'm, I'm beating a, a dead horse here. Um, but it's like, it's literally, it's making a decision from your mind versus making a decision from your, your gut or your intuition. Your mind is represented or I'm going to say represented because I don't think controlled is the right word, but your mind is represented by, again, stories, beliefs that come from somewhere else. They come from, you know, your childhood, they come from, you know, whatever. And again, the whole like strategizing thing, get, it's like getting in your own way versus the page of cups coming from an intuitive space, following your intuition, not to mention pages are, are new. They're the newbies. Seven of swords is like staying in an old energy, staying like stagnant, staying stuck. The page of cups, it's like opening opportunity. And two, I don't know. I was like looking at both of these portals and the one in the page of cups there, it just looks more lush, more green. And then what's leaving is a 10 of pentacles with the eight of swords. The 10 of pentacles is about legacy, generational wealth, family, like generations, ancestral, you know, I don't know why there's such an emphasis on that, but um, abundance too. I mean, it, it feels like leaving behind something that you've built. Even maybe it's too like something that you and if there are other people, like, you know, if you have developed a community, if you have developed a peer group, if you've developed, you know, if you uh, found your like chosen family type of thing. I keep hearing too, like there's a graduation from that. Which to me just says it's like going to the next level because that's what you do when you graduate, right? You, it's like the ending of the journey that you have been on, even though we don't have the world card out here, but it's like, you know, there's a celebration of accomplishment, right? There's all these people holding hands around this. I don't know if that's like a rose bush or just a tree with, you know, something that they've probably built together, even a tradition that they've built together. And again, like graduating on to the next thing. And it's paired with the Eight of Swords. So this it's like difficult to mentally wrap your head around, literally, right? But then also too, we have this graduation from the Seven of Swords to the Eight of Swords. So that tells me that you are moving through energy. The Eight of Swords is, is a self-inflicted mind prison. This card has come out so much in these readings. I feel like there's always one card that makes an appearance through the majority of these readings. And it's been the Eight of Swords this time around. Because, you know, it's also too, it's like not wanting to accept or, um, yeah, accept the reality of things feeling trapped in some capacity, like literally not wanting to let go of this. This is the position of what is leaving. So even we are leaving behind this eight of swords energy too. It could even just be like holding yourself back from like making a decision that is best, best for you because you're worried about how it's going to affect other people. And interestingly enough, I don't, you know, I, I think that it, it is interesting that this starburst is the same starburst that's happening in the background of the Ten of, of Pentacles. So there's some kind of connection there, like an emotional attachment to a job, to a, a location where you live, to uh, friends or family, community again, something that you've built and are really happy about. But... You know, I get there's like some level of clarity, though, because with this being in a position of what's leaving. And then what is coming in is the eight of materials and the the knight of materials. So the eight of pentacles, the knight of pentacles. And even just look at the difference between these two eights. I mean, you might see eights. Eight, eight, triple eight, eight in general. 
But look at the difference between these two. This is like rebuilding energy is how that feels. The Eight of Pentacles is putting in practice. Practice makes perfect, right? It's understanding that you need to put in the time, your resources, your energy to something in order to manifest it into the physical plane. Not to mention too, like this just, it feels like there's multiple opportunities here in the eight of materials. And even taking the roses out of this tree, it's like, it's taking it with you, which, you know, I mean, it could just be like, you know, what you think you might lose by way of community or friendships or whatever, right? It's actually, I mean, it's not going to be lost at all. You'll take those things with you still, just in a different capacity. But again, like I said, like I was getting like rebuilding <laughs> energy out of, out of these. Because it really can be whatever you want it to be. However you decide to focus your energy into whatever is coming up next for you, that's what you are going to build. That's what you're going to create. And it also even feels like having help in some capacity. Actually, because I'm like kind of staring between these two cards here, um, you know, where over here you might have had help from outside, like from people, from other people, had support, you know, from other people. This is more like having to rely on yourself and like find a new like tree or like tradition. That's so interesting. And it's like with the Knight of Pentacles, um, that it's definitely something that's going to take time. Because the Knight of Pentacles is the slowest moving knight in the whole tarot. But um, however, though, it's these these both of these cards have like the same energy because what you focus your energy on flourishes. But, you know, it's like you 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 don't grow roses overnight, though. Right. You have to plant the seed. You have to um, water it every day. You have to prune it. You have to right? Like you have to do all these that you have to show up. You have to put your energy and your resources and your time into the thing in order to see it manifest. So this is like, like I said, rebuilding, but also it it's possible. And it is very much for your highest good. This opportunity, this portal. I mean, it's literally moving to a different place, whether that is emotionally, mentally, it could be, you know, physically relocating, but it is considering what you are leaving behind and considering what you are potentially going to build or what you even want to build. Cause maybe this has been great, but you're like, you know, I would actually make some different decisions along the way. Beautiful. I'm going to leave it there. Thank you so much Virgo for allowing me to read your cards. I will talk to you soon. Bye.